In this video we're going to be looking at what it's like to actually use MyOpenMath or WAMAP or another IMATHES system uh, from an LMS or using LTI integration. Uh, for this demo I'm going to be using Canvas but everything's basically the same in every LMS and I'll note the differences where they do exist. So I've already done the integration. There's a other sets of videos for each LMS showing how to actually do the integration. Uh, but for this one, I'm going to assume that we've already done the initial integration. Uh, and we're using either a global LTI key or one of the underscore one style LTI keys that are recommended. Uh, those are the only ones that allow grade pass back. All right, so the first step, which I think was shown in those other videos as well, is when you first as a teacher, when you first click a link from the LMS, it's going to ask you to sign in if you haven't already. Um, and so I've already done that. And then it's going to ask me to either associate my LMS course with the existing course or create a copy of my existing course. Now, this is going to determine where your students end up getting enrolled in my open math. Uh, so like if you imported a master course or you imported an, a course a long time ago, you're probably not going to want to associate, but are going to want to copy instead. Um, but for the sake of this um, demo, we're going to look at the uh, associate option just because, well, actually, no, let's go ahead and just create a copy. That'll work. All right, and there we go. So that's done the initial sort of setup process. Uh, by the way, kind of handy, if you click on this LTI home thing, it will tell you the course ID on my open math of um, that you're now associated with. Uh, so this is this will tell you where the assignment actually lives. So it's not in the course you originally imported. It has nothing to do with whatever LTI key you put in. The LTI key does not actually determine where your course gets associated. Um, it, this is where the course now lives uh, or where the assignment lives and this is the course that your students are going to get enrolled in. All right, so that is the basics of just sort of the initial launch. Um, as we, as I just showed you, um, as a teacher, uh, you can click this LTI home link here, and that will get you to a place where you can like access the grade list, um, where you can um, look at um, the, like the item analysis, where you can access the settings and the question list for the assessment. Um, so this these can be handy to uh, be able to edit the assessment easily. You're not you're not gonna be able to do everything via LTI. There are times when you as a teacher are gonna need to log in directly to my open math to do things. But if you just need to make a quick change like to the assessment settings, you can do so relatively easily here. Or if you just want to look at students' grades and things like that or access their work, uh, you can do that this way. All right. So there is sort of the initial teacher bit. Now let's talk about the student experience. So now I'm logged in as a student. Um, first thing to know is your students do not need to go directly to my open math and enroll. And in fact, you should not, you should absolutely not ever give out your course ID and enrollment key to students. Do not let them go and enroll. Otherwise, you're going to end up with duplicate students in your course and it will be super annoying. Uh, also, grade return only works if they're accessing the assignments directly from the LMS. Uh, and so it's super important that you have students going in this way uh, through the LMS. So what happens is, um, so if I was to switch back to my teacher view here for a section, second uh, and go into like the grade list, you'll notice I don't have any students enrolled in the course right now. So students don't like magically show up on your roster when you do the course association. Um, what happens is when the student first clicks one of these links uh, from the LMS, uh, the system I open math automatically handles enrolling them in the course and creates sort of a fake account for them um, that they won't have a username and password for. They won't be able to log in directly, but they'll have sort of a shadow account, if you will. So as a student, I click this link and it takes me directly into the assignment. Right, uh, and then um, I can go ahead and start my assignment, and oh, I should do something where I actually get a point, uh, so we can see what happens. Oh, I think I can do this one relatively easily. All right, and so the student just works through their assignment as as usual. Um, now, when they're done, right, this is just gonna 
take them back to here. In order to actually get out of the assignment, they're going to have to go back and navigate in the LMS's navigation system. Um, my Open Math can't tell the LMS to do something. Uh, so all we can do is show our assignment. The student would have to navigate out of there to, to get back to something else. Uh, and that's the entire student experience. So that, that's all the student's going to be able to do is go in and, you know, work on assignments. Um, and though we'll, we will see in a second how they can go and view their results. Um, so we'll get back to that. Okay, so back in the teacher view then, uh, if I go back now and look at my grade list, you'll notice that student is now showing up uh, in the in the course, and I have access to their assignment, so I can go and look at their work uh, and do things like that. Um, also, if I were to go into my uh, grade book now, actually, it's not gonna. Oh, I guess it did already show up. Um, usually, grades take a little while to show up. Um, oftentimes there's about a five minute delay between when the student last did something in the assignment and when the grade shows up in the LMS. So don't freak out if it doesn't show up immediately. Um, and yeah, so, so the grades will show up in the LMS. Notice you, there isn't any easy way here to access like the student's work out of the LMS's grade book. That's just an unfortunate side effect of, um, uh, of integration. So if you as a teacher want to go look at a stu specific student's uh, work, you'll need to click on the assignment uh, and then go to that LTI home and the grade list and then you can click on their score and pull up their work on that assignment. All right, so let's see what else do we need to worry about. Um, so the there's with when it comes to something like due dates, there's two ways that you can handle things. Um, one option is to you yourself set the due dates both in the LMS and in my open math. Um, and usually this is what you need to do uh, if you want sort of both places to display and enforce the due dates, which is usually necessary. Usually if you do not set the due date in my open math, uh, but you do in the LMS, some LMSs provide ways to get into the assignment anyway, and my open math won't know it's past the due date and will let them keep working on the assignment. So usually you need to set the due dates in both. Um, the exception to that is in Canvas, where in Canvas there is an option to allow the LMS, to allow Canvas to set the due date. Um, unfortunately, the LMSs have, other LMSs haven't gotten on board with, with supporting that yet. Um, so something to be aware of that though, with that though, is um, when you first start out, um, so if I go back to my modules here and I click on one of these other assignments that no one has started yet, um, it's going to say, oh, okay, so it already has a, does have a due, due default set. Um, so normally there would not be a due date here already. It will say waiting to set the due date. Uh, what happens is when the first student clicks on that assignment, um, my open math will then set the due date in my open math. In other words, they, they don't want to, we don't want to accidentally set the due date based on, you know, before you've sort of finalized things. Uh, so it bases it on the first student launch. Now, if you then change the due dates in Canvas, um, so like if I were to go in here and edit this assignment and change the due date uh, to something else, then when that student comes in, so student comes in and launches that assignment, um, <clears throat> my open math is going to register that and it's going to say, okay, that's the new due date. Um, but the way it does that is it doesn't know whether you changed the default due date or whether you changed it just for that student since Canvas allows you to override due dates per student. So to handle that, um, my open math is going to um, still have that same default due date. So you might get a little confused if you go into like the grade list and it's telling you that the due date was, um, you know, something other than what you're expecting. The way it handles it is this, is it sets an exception. Um, and we'll probably see that um, I guess it's not displayed on that particular page, but um, the 
yeah, so it, it, the system will set an exception. I think there may be some way I can show you that. Um, here we are. So here you can see that that student now has an exception, a due date exception that's been set by LTI. So so because Canvas said it's due at on the 8th for this student, it's now due on the 8th just for that student, and this is the way it handles it. This is just a good warning in case if it looks like the due date hasn't changed, be aware that it could just be that that um, my open math is now setting exceptions for students because it thinks that um, because you know you change the due date from the default. All right. Um, so one other thing I wanted to show you is what happens sort of after the due date. So let me go ahead and change this due date to something in the past. And now if as a student, if I were to launch this assignment that is now past due, my open math is now going to um, give the student the ability to view their assignment. Um, so this, in order for the student to be able to look at their work after the due date, they have to go and again click on the assignment uh, and then they can click this view scored assessment thing and actually view their work on the assignment. Um, so they can't get to it from the grade book. They have to go back to the assignments and click on the past assignment in order to be able to get to it. And that's really the important stuff. Um, just a couple other things to mention. Uh, if on your assessment um, you decide to use some of the some of these features like uh, message my instructor about this question um, these features do not work horribly well via via LTI um, I can't recommend using them but they are available if you want to use them um, and let me show you what that looks like for the student experience so as a student if I come in here and click on this assignment uh, here we are. Okay, so you'll notice now there's a little icon up here for messages. Unfortunately, there's no way for my open math to tell the LMS that you have a message or that they have a message. Um, so the student's not going to get any kind of notifications from the LMS that they have a message. That's just the way it is. Um, but when they open up an assignment, they'll be able to access messages this way. Uh, and if they have a reply, it will have a little like new message icon on there uh, to let them know that they have a new message. So they can still come in here and click the message my instructor. They can send the message uh, to you. You can reply um, and then um, and then, you know, they can get back to their back to their assignment and and keep working on it. Um, the uh, you'll notice that it did something weird with tabs there, but I'm not quite sure what. Um, the yeah, so they can get in there, then they can access their messages, and if you've replied to them, then they can read their messages that way. Uh, and that's the way that um, the message thing works. And also, if you try to use post to forum, it's going to behave basically the same way, where um, you know the student can access. The poster messages from within an assignment, but there's not any way to get to them directly from the LMS, and there's no notification of them uh, from the LMS. All right, and that's the sort of basics of using um, LTI or integration with with my Open Math. Uh, one last thing to mention is I did say you know there's some things that you are kind of hard to do from here. Uh, in those cases, you might need to go directly to my Open Math. Uh, one thing to note is if you do go to my open math, you might find yourself, okay, I didn't in this case, but you might in some cases find yourself sort of trapped. Let me see if I can show you what that looks like. Um, so if I, let's say, go to, I'm just going to open this in a new tab there. So like here, I, I see myself trapped in LTI world. Uh, so I have my LTI breadcrumbs and I can't get back to the home. If that ever happens to you, just go up here and edit the URL back to the My Open Math homepage, and that will clear that out and get you sort of standard logged in. Uh, and then you can go into your um, then you can go into your course and do whatever you need to do with it. Uh, just a few things to be aware of there is 
Um, there are certain things you can do that will reflect back in the LMS and certain things that you can't do. Uh, so like if you add a new text item or, or actually if you add a new anything, um, those changes are not going to get reflected in the LMS because uh, there's no way for my open math to tell the LMS that those things have been added. Uh, so like if you add a new assignment, um, you'll have to um, add it into the LMS. Usually the way that you add, like if you created a new assignment, the way that you'd add it in is you'd go do an export again. Uh, but this time you would select individual items to export and you would make sure to not include the app config because you already have one. So if, you know, make sure that this is not checked uh, if you're doing it for Canvas um, or actually probably for any of them. I guess Canvas is the big one. Uh, so yeah, make sure you don't do that. So then you can just export that one item, go back to Canvas and import it and then that'll add it to your course. Um, any like assessment changes, like changing the settings or the questions in an assessment, um, will automatically get reflected when they're launched from the LMS. Just make sure that you're editing it in the course that the assignment actually lives in and not the originally imported course if you did do a course copy. Um, but yeah, so here you can do things like your mass change assessments in order to change assessment settings. You can get into the full roster and grade book and things like that. So like if you need to, oops, I forgot I made a copy, didn't I? Uh, I think it's this one. Uh, no, that's not it either. Um, I can't remember what course it was. <laughs> this is the, the usual problem people have. There it is. It's on the bottom. Um, so like if I needed to give this student a time limit multiplier for accessibility, um, for disability reasons, you know, you could come into the roster here and do that. Um, if you needed to make like a manual exception, if you need to edit other things, you can do so there. Oh, uh, one last thing I just realized I didn't mention. Um, you can use uh, late passes with with um, LTI assignments. The one downside is the count the due date that shows in the LMS is not going to change when they use the um, it, the late pass because there's you know, again no way for for my open math to tell the LMS about the date change. Uh, so, but they can use um, late passes uh, in it, though. It, they could, will only be able to actually use it if they can still access the assignment. Uh, so like in Canvas, um, there are usually two dates. There's the, uh, where'd it go? Where's my dates? Oh yeah, there's the due date and the available dates. Uh, so like if you set the available date so it actually hides from the student, then they won't be able to get in to click it. Uh, but if you... Um, leave those blank and just have a due date, then the student will be able to click in and, and use a late pass to extend the assignment if they want to, if you've enabled that and provided all the um, you know settings to do that. All right, and there's sort of the basics of using uh, LTI. Actually, just to show you here, this is what it would look like for a student if you had late passes enabled. Um, they would click on the assignment uh, and then my open math is going to say, hey, you still have late passes. You can open this. They can click the redeem late pass, and then they can work on the assignment. Uh, and again, if they actually go back and look here, it's still going to show as a past assignment in, in the LMS. Uh, but they'll be able to actually work on it, and my open math will still send a grade back to the, to the LMS for it.